flashlight Something you can ride to and vibe to I'm just giving you the keys to survive Never let society tell you how to begin living your life By following the norm and trends I warn my friends, don't get blinded by the media I'd rather be myself, take flight, gotta speed it on speed dial And meanwhile, my dream right beside me with a smile She like. All right, it's Ryan, and this is Chengdu City of Gastronomy. I'm with my friend Matt today, and we're talking teaching in China. We're gonna go for some dry pot, which is one of our favorite dishes. Unfortunately, it's duck dry pot, so uh, duck, foot. duck foot dry pot. <laughs> duck itself would be pretty good, but duck foot, I don't think there's much meat on a duck foot. No. Nope. Uh, we'll see, I guess. And I think the place we're going to is the one that says a tale of kung fu chef which makes a lot of sense because uh, i don't know what does that mean looks like a cool spot to hang out do you know how to do this no. she wants us to scan it and order i guess allow this app to access my public info Public pictures and everything. They want to see my pictures? Okay. I got some of this bread. I got a big order of duck feet. Perfect. I hit the button and it started talking. Is that for real? Yeah, I didn't. Did, did you what understand? Table, you said 20 or something. Is there a table number on here? 25. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It's saying you're ordering. Yeah, okay, am I done? Is it gonna keep saying that until I do something? Because I'm on a screen here and I can't read anything. You're blowing this, dude. Everyone's freaking out. <laughs> Shit. You know what we need. Beers. beers. Oh, I didn't order beers. Ew. We got it, that's us. That's kind of fun. We should just order like napkins, like just to hear yeah, our yeah. name call. Yeah, yeah, sugar packet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, she was asking me to review my order. I can pick up bits and pieces, but things like that, it's not like, if it doesn't follow like a logical order, you know what I'm saying? If someone comes out of right field, yeah, yeah. you need you know, to start no the conversation the subject, and, and it goes like one level at a time. Yeah. As soon as you skip a level or ask a question out of left field, I'm lost. Oh. All right. I say we keep track of how many feet are in here. What? I don't know. Just how many feet do you think are in there? Oh, you want to do like a guess? Yeah, let's, let's place a bet on this. I thought you were trying to see like so that you got the same, you know, not one of us was like screwing the other one over. No, like, no, no. That's hey, I, there was 10 duck feet in here and you ate eight of them. <laughs> um, right. I'm going to say eight. You're going to say eight? Eight duck feet. Because they're big. Look at this. Yeah. That's one. No, I'm saying 12. 12 of them? Yeah. Price is right rules? No. What do you mean no? All right. That's universal. Okay. That's <laughs> universal for all guessing? Absolutely. All right. I don't even know why I asked. Where are you from and why are you here? I'm originally from the suburbs of Chicago. Ended up in Memphis, Tennessee, playing some music with a band. Good time. Branched out, wanted to teach abroad, so fight around and ended up in Chengdu, China. So how long have you been here? Been here two years. Two years. Is this the bread you got? Yeah. Nice. This is uh, good stuff, right? Oh, she's here. So, been here a couple of years. Just thought if I'm going to teach history, oh, teaching history to middle schoolers. And just thought if I'm going to teach about the world, I ought to go uh, see the world. For how, how long did you teach in America for? About four years. Yeah. Yeah, lots of beans, lots of onions, and lots of duck feet. Pepper, celery, you know, hot peppers. Those beans are weird, but kind of good. Yeah, they are good. So dry pot is basically pot pot without the broth. 
because usually it comes out hot on like a sizzling platter. Oh, you're, you're diving into it. Mm -hmm. I'm going for it. I mean, it's basically fat. Cartilage. Cartilage. But the cartilage is soft, I think. I think I'm getting some the of the bone. web. Yeah, there's like web the web duck in there. web in there. Like this web is actually pretty tender. It's a tender web. <laughs> From what I've heard, the best part of the duck's foot is the pad at the bottom of the foot. Actually, the name, Ya Jiang, it means duck palm. Duck palm. Yeah, so when they're, when they're talking about duck's feet, when it comes to food, they usually call it duck palm. Okay. Instead of, you know, just saying duck foot. I think I just got into that. Yeah, this piece right here. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say it's meat. No, it's uh. No. Well, I think the main reason they eat it is for the texture. It absorbs the flavors of the hot pot, and then the texture, which isn't really a type type of texture that we like, but soggy, kind of gooey, yeah, gelatinous. But then you get that random cartilage crunch. So the bread is. Oops. It's called something like side of the pot bread because they cook oh, it on the side of a pot. That's good stuff. Yeah, it is kind of sweet. I don't know if it's supposed to be a dessert or. Do we dunk it? I kind of want to dunk it. I'm gonna dunk it. I'm a big fan of the dunk. I know. I played NBA Jam with you. And the big question is, how is teaching different here than in America? Well, you know, anyone's experience is going to be different depending on where you are, but with me, I mean, when I was teaching in Memphis, I was teaching five different subjects, six different subjects, packed throughout the day, you know, I had one planning period trying to get all this stuff together, and uh, the school I'm currently working for, it seems like they really care about giving the teachers time to plan their lessons. So my class load is cut way back, which develop, you know, I don't have to take work home which any teacher in the United States, they're taking work on. You know, they're grading stuff on the weekends. And every once in a while, I got to do something like that. But if you use your time effectively, you really don't have to do too much outside of school, you know. Like how many contact hours here compared to there? Oh, I haven't even done the math. But here, how many do I have a day? Three. You know, so I'm like around 20 contact hours a week when in the States I was doing... 30. Bigger uh, class size. Depends. Much bigger class size. Yeah, here my biggest class size is 11. You know, teaching kids that really want to learn. Uh, not a ton of pressure, you know, like high stakes testing pressure. You don't have a ton of that. Um, well, especially since I'm teaching the middle school, you know, I don't have the, the Gao Cao, SAT, ACT. So it's just kind of, we don't have too much state testing and that kind of stuff. So it's nice. What about resources? I think that always depends on the school you're at, you know. China can make it a little more difficult if your school doesn't have like a VPN. So much learning can happen through the internet these days that dealing with the Great Firewall is kind of locked down in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, well, you just got to find ways around it, you know. I have noticed that my troubleshooting skills have gotten incredibly better. You know, if this doesn't work, let's try this. Let's reset the router. Let's reactivate the VPN. Let's, you know. So, you find ways around it, but for the most part, you have what you need and you get by. So, you think the students are more eager to learn here? Um, I don't know. That's tough to say. Not that they're more eager to learn, but since I have more time, I can create better lessons. I'm more organized. You know, the class sizes are smaller, so I can meet their demands more. It's a good gig. Yeah. yeah. And the pay? Is it comparable to America? With, I think that really depends on your school, what, what's asked of you, and what's, what you're kind of given. You know, because our pay certainly isn't on par with the United States pay. Um, but by providing a living space, by, you know, uh, providing some tax incentives with your food and your cell phone and your internet, it really does make it comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Like you're saving more money here too. Absolutely. Yeah.
and I don't know if that's a train like because if, if we do a night out and we go out like I might spend 30 bucks you know at a decent night out uh, here but if I'm back in the States things get carried away you could easily you know if you go out and have dinner and drinks and you go out for a night you, you might spend 200 dollars you know I don't know if you are supposed to dip but the dip isn't bad I like the dip uh -huh. I like to scoop scoop up a bean you scooped up a bean. I scooped a bean. I think I'm too flimsy to scoop. I can't get it wet. Oh, oh, confirm. Gangwa nachos? Okay, so tell me what kind of opportunities do you have here in China that you wouldn't get in America, or maybe you would get, but it would take longer. Well, once again, it all depends on the school that you're at and what, what you have available. Um, but with that lightened teaching load, when I would normally be spending my time creating assessments on the weekend, things that I'm able to now do at school, that opens up other extracurricular opportunities. So uh, just in, in my case alone, I've been able to uh, work my way into an athletic director role at our school. Uh, get involved with the International Schools Association in Chengdu, um, and that's you know that's made a big difference. Uh, being able to do that with your time is something that I enjoy. Um, well, it's not just time; it's like you know, if you wanted to be an athletic director and you set aside absolutely. time in America, like you wouldn't be able to, right? Like you no, not until years of experience. And yeah, or given any opportunity to because you've never done it. You know, so that's one of those things. It's, uh, like experience needed, but no one's willing to hire a new, a new person, and and I think those opportunities exist here just because you know, especially in a city like Chengdu, that's just booming. Yeah. You know, in population. Yeah. Those opportunities do exist. It's also that being in the right place at the right time, and a little hard work can go a long way. Would you rather have duck feet or duck blood? I like duck blood. It's not bad. In the hot pot. Yeah. Or you just drink it fresh. Just fresh the head off and just chug it. <laughs> we need another beer. Yeah. Here though you get more international students, you get international teachers. Yeah, that that's one of the coolest things. Uh, you know, we've been in my class we've been following one of my classes, we've been following what's going on with North Korea and the United States all along. So lately this uh, the summit that they had in Singapore, you know, it's been cool to talk about all these issues with them all year and sit down with, you know, a student from South Korea, a student from Switzerland, three students from America, a student from Canada, several Chinese students, a student from Taiwan. And we sit and we get all these opinions and all these different backgrounds coming in. It's, it's awesome, you know, it, it's really awesome to have a student talk about how my grandparents live near the border and they say this and this. and. Another kid who's, uh, whose father's from the United States and talking about those opinions. It's just really interesting, you know, to get those perspectives. Not only with the kids, too, but with the staff. Yeah. I know you've been a part of those discussions where we sit around and we talk politics. Yeah. And just at that table, we're getting eight different countries represented. You know, that's, that's a cool thing. Usually we get the chicken wing one. So just imagine this, just with awesome loaded chicken wings. Get this duck foot, like, I go in for this thing, I go and invite this juicy part, it's and it's like, yeah, and it's like clawing me, web it's getting me on the way down. Duck slap. What the duck is that? Ducking ridiculous. It is ducking ridiculous. It's like the guy who made this, who came up with this dish, is a total quack. You know, the thing that's tough with the schools, is like making a leap like you guys have done, like a lot of the teachers have done here. You know, accepting any job where you haven't seen where you're going to live, yeah. you haven't seen what your teaching schedule is going to be like, and you've spoken to people and you've kind of got an understanding, but you really have no idea. And like as much as this job, that I like enjoy this job and you know a lot of the positives we've talked about, I'm sure there are plenty of schools where it is just a nightmare. Yeah. You know? Show up and, and the, you yeah. just want to leave. Exactly. So, I think it takes a lot of investigation to make sure it's a quality school, but but even then, like you could be duped, so you got to be pretty thorough. And I mean, how much traveling did you do before you came here? 
Uh, I went to Mexico with my family when I was like 15. But other than that, no, I mean, I hadn't really been out of the country. So it was a huge jump from going from the Midwest, jumping uh, whatever it is, 15,000 miles away. One of the biggest advantages teaching overseas is the fact that you're overseas and you're you know, you get to experience another culture, you're living in it, it's not just visiting for a short period of time. Yep. You know, and everybody should do that if they can. I think so too. And like a, teaching is great for that because you're, you're saving more money than you would at home. It's a great way to see the world and just to expand yourself as a person. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be this final thing either. No. You know, a two-year contract, I'm going to go live abroad for a couple of years. Yeah. And do it. Yeah. It's stuck so bad I'm ready for the bill. Mm. It's gonna be a big edit job. <laughs> uh, a lot of cuts in this one. Okay, we're full of duck feet. How many were there? 17. 17, which means I won. And thank you for be helping me out. Thank for being you for in the having video. me. That was good. Um, we're going to go grab some beers. Um, so thanks for watching. Please subscribe below and all that stuff. And you got a rhyme for me? And remember, if you're looking for a tree, you might want to look somewhere else than duck feet. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Do you feel stupid doing that? No. No? No, not at all. Yeah, that's good. There are YouTube videos where my where I'm You can't like Google your name though and find it. Uh.